Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, I'll be showing you 10 must have guns if you want to own the show on Mayhem 10. It's the biggest challenge there is that very few guns are up to, and these are 10 of the best that will ensure you'll have a much easier time. I'll be telling you who drops them, what they do, and how you can get them dealing peak damage so you don't just survive in Mayhem 10, but thrive there, and if your favourite gun's not on this list, let me know and maybe we'll see a part 2. If this video helped you out in any way, I'd appreciate you helping me out by dropping a like. It helps keep me doing what I'm doing, and let's crack into it. We open this list of 10 great guns for Mayhem 10 with the Monarch. It can only be obtained on Mayhem 6 and above by defeating Killer Bolt. You fight here at the very end of Lectra City. The Monarch is a deadly Vladoff assault rifle that can come in any element, including non-elemental. If the Shredder Fire and the Dictator had a baby, the Monarch would be it. It holds the positives of both, with the power of the Dictator and the fire rate of the Shredder Fire. Put those together and you get a powerhouse gun, able to annihilate anything. The high number of pellets fired at such a high rate allow it to easily lay waste to mobs and bosses alike. A standard version will have 4 pellets listed on the card, but you can double that for a cost of 2 ammo per shot with the times 8 variant. Activating the bipod will double the damage of whatever version you have, not at the cost of ammo, but movement speed. With it, you'll move at walking speed without the ability to jump, but that's a small price to pay for how much more powerful it makes you and the Monarch can be an incredibly powerful weapon in the right hands. Up next we have the Kalsen, another one of the Mayhem 6 plus guns that you can only get by defeating Captain Tront. You fight at the very end of Athenus. The Kalsen is a dial SMG that, like the Monarch, can come in any element, including non-elemental. It deals good damage at a high fire rate and its magazine size changes a lot from version to version but typically the lower the max size, the more damage you'll deal. It's unique in the way that it has two phases in which it deals damage. The first phase is standard for every gun when the bullets hit your enemy, but those same bullets will explode a few seconds later. It's a great effect and practically doubles its damage, with half being typical gun damage and the rest splash damage. Because of the delay in the stickies exploding, it is possible to crit swap with it, which you'll see me doing in this gameplay. It's a good trick and can boost its damage dramatically. However, the damage it deals is high enough on its own, but it's there if you find you've got to have more. I gotta have more. I gotta have more. Moving on now to the Recursion, a melee one shotgun that has an increased chance to drop from General Tron. You fight here in Desolation's Edge. Because it's a melee one gun, it deals high elemental damage, and you also have the option to switch between two elements, but where it really shines is against crowds of enemies. It fires a single elemental disc that will ricochet between opponents, dealing more damage the more it ricochets. You might have to wait a while for the brunt of the force to hit, but when it does, it'll hit hard, killing enemies with full health and lagging your game, but hey, that's just Borderlands 3 at the moment. It does need to be charged before firing, and it does fire slowly, but that one bullet can deal damage to a large number of enemies and oftentimes your screen will be filled with projectiles hunting down your foes. The recursion is perhaps best on Amara who can dramatically increase the amount of ricocheting discs, but all Vault Hunters can bring forth some serious mobbing mayhem with the recursion. Up next, the Sandhawk, a powerful sniper rifle that only drops from Katagawa Jr. and it's another one of the new guns that can only be obtained when you're on Mayhem 6 or above. The Sandhawk has etched its name into Borderlands history through its popularity in Borderlands 2, and it returns in Borderlands 3, but this time in a different form. It is now a sniper rifle instead of an SMG, but if you get a fully automatic one, it's practically the same thing. It fires the same 9 pellets that move slowly, mimicking a hawk in flight. Each pellet deals high damage, and the Sandhawk is essentially a high powered SMG, and it really shows. You can use it like one and easily defeat any opponent you come up against. There's no reason to use another sniper rifle, the Sandhawk is simply the best in its class, most damage and the highest fire rate, and probably the highest mag size too, it has no trouble downing bosses 
or groups of mobs in record time. It's balanced by the much smaller sniper rifle ammo pool, but when you do have ammo to burn, the Sandhawk will mount anyone faster than I go round the track in my Sand Shark and Jack X. Up next, the former top dog, the Anarchy, a DLC 2 exclusive shotgun that you can get as a world drop there. It can come in any elemental form, including non-elemental, and although it may seem lackluster when you first pick it up, it will get exponentially more powerful. The power compounds by 30% each time you kill an enemy or automatically reload. It stacks up to 10 times and when you're at max stacks, the Anarchy is a beast and very few guns can compete with it when it comes to raw power. It only takes a few shots to end the life of any mob and it's a force against bosses too. You want to look out for a x18 or x20 variant to deal the most damage, but any Anarchy at max stacks will deal the most damage per shot of any shotgun in the game. Next up, the Yellow Cake, the new number one, which can only be obtained during the Cartel event from either Fish Slap, Tyrone Smallums, or Joey Ultraviolet himself. The Yellow Cake is an extremely powerful launcher that always comes in radiation. It's manufactured by COV, which means it'll need to be started before firing, and it'll overheat instead of you having to reload. If you use it right though, it'll never overheat as it's capable of downing bosses in a single shot. That's easiest when you're Moe's, but whoever you are, the Yellow Cake will make every boss fight short and sweet. Its projectile pattern is to praise for the damage it deals, splitting off into two projectiles after traveling a short while, before those split off themselves and fall to the ground, as you can see here. To make the most of that, you want your projectiles to split off and hit your opponents when there's four of them. To do that, I suggest aiming at your target's feet far enough away that the projectiles split off once before they hit them. That's because the projectiles also split when they hit an enemy and aiming at their feet will cause them to split off and land close to them, dealing massive splash damage. It's simply a great gun and if you're struggling to complete a fight, you're missing one ingredient and that's a yellow cake. Moving on now to the Hellshock, a rapid firing pistol. It has an increased chance to drop from Gigamine, who you fight here in the Meridian Metroplex. The Hellshock is manufactured by Maliwan, which means it deals good elemental damage and comes in two elements that you can change between. Those elements are always fire and shock, hence its name, and that's always a great combination to have. It's perfect for fighting shielded and flesh targets, as you can switch between them to ensure you're always dealing peak damage. However, you can also shoot at the ground beneath your target rather than changing elements as the bullets will ricochet in the opposite element, dealing whatever that element is to them. It's a decent tactic, although with a longer time to kill on Mayhem 10, I find myself changing more often than not. Overall though, the Hellshock is a great pistol that's rapid fire rate, sets it apart from all the rest and makes it a blast to use. Up next is the OPQ system, a newly added Atlas Assault Rifle that is another Cartel Event exclusive gun that can only be dropped by Josie Byte, Franco Farwell, or Joey Ultraviolet. The OPQ system is the revamped version of the original Q system, with all of the style and a lot more of the firepower. It shoots a lot faster, deals way more damage, and also fires the occasional shot round which deals a third of what's listed on the card. Its alternate firing mode is a little different though, it doesn't paint targets for track arounds. Instead it produces an exact copy of the gun that shoots at wherever you're aiming. Well, almost exact. It will be boosted by anointments, but it shoots slowly and deals a lot less damage. It was nerfed recently because Moe's had too much fun with it, and now well, it doesn't really do anything. That aside though, the OPQ system is another new and powerful gun that will make your life that much easier on Mayhem 10. Up next we have the Lob, a Torg shotgun that has an increased chance to drop from Grave Ward. You fight in the floating tomb on Eden 6, but if I was you, I'd just try to get it as a world drop. The Lob fires large elemental orbs of energy that travel slowly and deal constant ticks of damage as they pass near enemies. You can get one in every element and the damage each orb deals is high. 
The orbs will also pass through people, allowing one orb to deal damage to multiple enemies. The fire rate is decent and there's plenty in the magazine, allowing you to paint your screen in orbs. They will also deal splash damage when they hit a world surface, but the main damage is done during their travel, which is always great when it's working. You might find sometimes that your projectiles travel right through your enemies and deal no damage. That's a bug, not a feature, and shouldn't be happening, but it does. When it works properly though, the lob is a great gun that is definitely one of the better shotguns to have in your Mayhem 10 arsenal. The last gun I have for you is the Redistributor, definitely the hardest gun to get on this list considering it drops from Wotan during the Mali 1 takedown. That's difficult enough on Mayhem 10, but the drop rates of late don't help anything either. Either way, the Redistributor is a Hyperion SMG that can come in every element. It's pretty much identical to the unique rarity one you receive from the quest, the Impending Storm, but a lot more powerful. Every 7th shot of the Redistributor will be amped, dealing 120% more damage than it normally would, and that bullet will also change nearby enemies. It's a great effect and makes it a great weapon when you're mobbing, particularly if you're Zane. While Zane has his barrier up, all his bullets will be amped and therefore change to nearby enemies, as you're seeing in this gameplay. It does kill my frame rate, but it also deals a ton of damage, allowing me to proc kill skills constantly and tear through hordes of enemies. That's a pretty average one on one depending who you play as, but it definitely makes up for that when you're surrounded by enemies, and it never fails to get you out of some sticky situations. So that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned of 10 great guns that will help make your Mayhem 10 life a whole lot easier. If your favourite gun didn't make this list, let me know and maybe there'll be a part 2. And either way guys, I'll catch you in the next one.